A four kilogram counterweight is attached to a light cord, which is wound around the spool. The spool is a uniform solid cylinder of radius 8 centimeters and mass 2 kilograms. A. What is the net torque on the system about the point O? B. When the counterweight has speed V, the pulley has an angular speed omega equals velocity over radius. Determine the total angular momentum of the system about O. C. Using the fact that torque equals the derivative of angular momentum with respect to time and your result from B, calculate the acceleration of the counterweight. I got C there. We're looking for the acceleration. B, was that the angular momentum? Is that, fun is that just the angular momentum total? Yeah. Okay. And then what was it? A? The net torque on the system. The net torque acting on the system. Okay. So we know the mass of the counterweight here, um, which we just call M, so that's this guy right here. We have the radius of the wheel, which we know is a solid disk, which we know the moment of inertia is one half mass of the uh, solid disk times radius squared. And we know the mass of the solid disk is one or 2.0 kilograms. First is to figure out the net torque acting on this guy. We need all the forces acting on this. Oh, with our axis of rotation, I believe it identified the axis of rotation right in the middle there. So what are the forces acting on this whole system? Please give me the forces, Hillary. Uh, force of gravity. Black. Force of gravity acting on the block. Um, tension of the What about the forces acting on the spool here? The solid disc. Uh, we have a force of gravity. And force Something causes it to spin. Uh, oh, um, tension from the. There's also tension, which is equal but opposite. Uh, the net torque here, uh, about our axis of rotation, we have. Um, in the end, everything cancels out except for this torque due to the force of gravity. We have the torque due to the force normal of the spool, torque due to the force of gravity of the spool. We have the torque due to the tension, torque due to the tension, and the torque due to the force of gravity acting on the mass. That all equals, oh, we're actually not even concerned about what it equals at this point. We're just trying to find the net torque. Uh, again, these two cancel out because they're both their lever arms are equal to zero. The torque due to the tension, these two are equal but opposite, so they both cancel. And then we have the torque due to the force of gravity. It makes sense to set this as our positive direction because that's the direction this whole thing's going to go, which would make this, the torque due to the force of gravity, positive. I do understand that that would be negative into the board, but sometimes we do that. The silver. Um, kind of like each tension, doesn't each tension have a different lever arm distance? Or ah, is it? It's, it's going to be, they're going to end up having the same, you know, it's these R sign. They a bit. Oh, okay. They both end up act, acting from there with a tension of, of zero. Or I'm sorry, with a lever arm equal to the radius. So now we have the lever arm times the force of gravity times the sine of theta, or R M G sine theta. Now, and I think this is what you were getting at. We'll we'll talk about right here. We'll do some more specifics on that. Okay. Can you quickly explain again why it's positive? Can you identify the it for me? Oh, the torque due to force gravity. Oh, it's just because I define that direction as positive. Right. That's why. That's the only reason. If I draw it on the other side, it would match, and you'd make you happier. But that's not my job. <laughs> um, so we have R M G sine theta. Now let's walk through this for a minute to make sure everybody remembers and understands what this R M G sine theta is going to be equal to. So. Just to draw a picture of this piece right here, just to make sure everybody can see it, we have this is the wheel, this is where the block is, and this is the R right here for the block. This is theta, and this is big R, the radius of the solid disk or the pulley. Remind me, what can we do with this? That was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than a calculator. Okay. Opposite. 
I bought news. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Little r. In other words, <laughs> big r equals r times the sine of theta. So while r changes as a function of time, and theta changes as a function of time, big r does not. So the net torque is equal to r times mg, where r is big r, the radius of the spool here. Uh, and I believe we have all of these numbers. So the net torque equals big R, 0 0.08 times the mass, which is four times G, the acceleration of gravity, 9.8. Torque, please. Three point one three six. Three point one three six. What are the dimensions on that? So it's like a newton meters. Newton meters. Is that a joule glass? No. Not in this case. For torque, we do not call it joules, just to identify it as different. So that is our torque. I guess we could do sig figs. 3.14 newton meters. Part B. For part B, we need the total <laughs> angular momentum about the axis of rotation, the center of this, which is going to be the angular momentum of the mass plus the angular momentum of the disc or the spool. What is the equation we're going to use for the angular momentum of the mass here? Spencer? No. Sure, we need the equation for the angular momentum of this mass. R cross P. It is going to be R cross P or RMV sine theta because it is a particle. Miller, what's the one we're going to use for the spool? I omega because it's an object with shape. So notice we have one for the particle, which is the mass, and one for the object with shape, which is spinning. So it's I omega. We have the exact same thing right here where we have R, big R equals R sine theta. So we have big R times MV plus the um, moment of inertia was at one half times the mass of the spool times the radius squared times omega. The total angular momentum then is equal to um, well, we have an issue because we don't know omega, the angular velocity. Thoughts? Mr. P? We don't know the velocity, you're right. Uh, okay. uh, velocity is equal to r omega. We know velocity equals r omega, so we know omega equals velocity divided by the radius. So we can substitute here rm times v plus one half mass of the spool multiplied by r squared times velocity divided by the radius. Or rmv plus one half times the mass of the spool times r times v. In other words, we get the velocity multiplied, the velocity times the radius multiplied by the mass plus the mass of the spool divided by two. So velocity multiplied by the radius, which is 0 0.08, multiplied by the mass of the object, which is four, plus the mass of the spool, two divided by two. Should be 0 0.400 times the velocity. So what we figured out is the angular momentum total with respect, and it's just as a term with respect to the velocity. It changes as a function of the velocity. The last part here is to figure out the linear acceleration of the whole thing. Remind me, what is the rotational version of Newton's second law? Nitish. Very close, John. Any amendments there? Um, net torque and the then net external torque. Remember, torque and the angular momentum are um, vectors. So we already figured out the net torque. 
it was equal to 3.136, and that's equal to the derivative with respect to time of 0 0.400 times the velocity. What's the derivative of velocity with respect to time, class? Well, we'll try that again. What's the derivative of velocity with respect to time, class? <laughs> In other words, the acceleration equals 3.136 plus you divided by 0 0.4. 7.84 meters per second squared.